this is Amy. I appreciate you taking time to stop by my channel today. <clears throat> Hi everyone, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by today. Today I'm going to do just a quirky kind of flower using flat brushes. It's not supposed to represent any specific type of flower. It's just something fun, just another idea of a different type of brush to use when you're creating floral patterns. So. I'm going to be doing it on this green glass wine bottle. I will be using a variety of sizes of flat brushes. I'm actually using three different sizes. I am not going to be real, real specific as far as the brands because honestly these are three different brands. One's folk art, one, well actually one is the flat one stroke brush, one is the Donna Dewberry fingernail brush. I'm not really sure how you do that with a fingernail, but anyways. And then another one uh, is also plaid, I guess, different one I've had for a long time. So the whole point is really is just to try to get three different sizes of fan brushes. Did I say flat brushes? I'm sorry if I did. These are fan brushes. And it doesn't really matter what brand or if you have them, have them in your brush pile, use them. All right, and then I'm going to be using a number eight flat brush, and that is a plaid one-stroke brush from uh, Princeton. This is a mini detailer, also a fingernail brush. So it's, it's a spotter. I'm going to be using that to do some line work, and then I'm going to be using a dotting stylus to add some dots. Paint I'm using just four easy colors: wicker white. Bumblebee, Eggplant, and Thicket. All folk art products. Most of them are the multi-surface. One is enamel. All right, I've already cleaned off this bottle. If you're new, I just want to explain that I do reuse my bottles for painting videos. So I've cleaned it off. If you're going to be doing glass, make sure you wash it with soap and water and then wipe it off with rubbing alcohol before you get started. All right, so let's begin. I'm going to start with my larger flat brush, or fan brush. I'm sorry. It is a fan brush, not a flat brush. So if I keep saying flat brush, it's because that's what I primarily use. So I apologize if that's what I'm saying. That's not what I'm meaning. So I just basically I'm loading it. Now, I'm not saying there's a wrong or right way to do this. This is how I'm doing it, okay? So I'm going to just go in around the bottle, and I'm just doing, for the purpose of the video, I'm just doing the front of the bottle. And I'd like it to be more fanned out and random. I, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I remember having an issue with this before when I was trying to paint on glass with these. but. Anyways, we're still going to go ahead and proceed. You just kind of push it down, fan it out, and come back in. It's not going to be giving you a real de um, oh, what am I going to say? A real I'm losing my my thought here. A real specific shape. They're going to be varied from each one that you do, and that's okay. It's okay for them to be different. It could also be the amount of paint that you're putting into the brush, but you know if you're finding that it's not giving you the the right shape or whatnot, I mean you can come back over and just kind of add add to the design just by pressing down on it. If you want? That's fine too. I like to see the the shape of the flower is a little bit different, but you can you know, touch it up if you want. It's fine. Then I'm going to grab one of the other brushes, and I'm going to use this, this red one. I'm going to make just a couple smaller ones to add in. And you can do it like that where you're pushing it down, pushing it up, pulling it back, and brazing up. If that's the shape you want, that's great. If it's not, just continue to press down. Apologize for my air conditioning was running in the background here. Alright, so then I'm going to go, I'm trying to stay in my camera line, I'm going to pull this back over. 
because none of this is going to be any kind of special loading. It's just going to be loading the brushes just like I showed you, but it's more important for me to get the painting of the design on the, on the bottle for you. So I'm just pushing it down. You can even move it back and forth a little bit. Come back up, pull it back. Again, that's kind of a little, not covering as well as I want, so I can tap it to get the desired shape that I want. Just play with it a little bit. It's fine. All right, like that. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put the heat gun on this to dry it before I put the next color. All right, so I went ahead, hit this with the heat gun. Now, it's not completely dry by any means. If you want it to be drier for your product, then I would suggest maybe giving it more time to dry, like an hour or so, and then go on with the next coat. It's just that the, the, the paint is pretty thick, so you're going to have a lot of mixing of the colors, and I really want to have the yellow stand out a little bit more. So I'm taking the other brush that I haven't used yet, and I'm tapping it in for the center. I'm just doing that. It doesn't have to be... And this is a uh, just a loose painting, and that's the intention, is for it to be loose, okay? Very loose. Not supposed to be you know, real precise. It's a fun, whimsical type of, of uh, design. So you can just come back in and tap it in if you want more, more opaqueness. Like this one was pretty thick. So I did realize that it might show, it might mix, intermix a little bit more with the colors. You know, so you can do do the technique a little bit. You can even brush it down if you want. I just thought this was a little bit of a neat idea. You know, again, if you don't like the wet on wet, with the thicker paint, it's going to show or it's going to mix. I mean, you're not going to avoid that, but that's okay. That's all right with me. I'm going to hit it again with the heat gun. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, I hit it with the heat gun. Now I'm going to go back over it with my original fan brushes, and I've got to be careful because I had two different sizes here. Just going to come down a little bit below it, kind of stamp out a little base for it, and then I'm going to push it up into it a little bit more. Like that. And again, if you want your base to be more you know, prominent, you can work on that. You know, keep working on it. Up to you. I just want to do a little bit of a pull from it and you know, maybe tie it a little bit more into the side here. Just very simple though. Pull it up into there. It up into there a little more. You can kind of stop and then maybe come back down here a little bit to finish off the bottom, the base of it. Then the little ones, I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm just going to come up in here, kind of start towards the bottom, go up a little bit, maybe load my brush a little more because you can do some pouncing, you know, just kind of lightly touching it to achieve also. If you want more of a base, you want that to be covered up more, you know, just hit it. Just touch it. And then come down here to the bottom and do the same. And I'm just going to come up in here a little bit. Come over here. And then go up and pull it down. And hit the base. And if you think it needs to have more paint, just touch it up. That's all you have to do. Just touch it up. Pretty cute. Again, with the, the bigger ones, you, know, you might want to give them a little more drying time or just go back over them like I'm doing now. It's fine. Then I'm going to take my little liner brush, go into the Thicket Green. Again, none of this is any special loading because I'm going into these paints with just a single coat of paint not mixing them. You know, you could if you want. 
up to you. And that's what I say. Just use what you have. You don't have to use the colors I have. You can use this in a different variation. However you want. As far as the poles that I'm making from this, you know, coming out here, it doesn't have to be a specific amount. This is a made up flower. So make it what you want it. If you feel like you want to go over it with something a little bit later, so it shows up better because it's a green bottle, you, know, you can do that too. And really any of my designs that I'm painting, they don't have to be made on glass. I just choose to do glass painting because I like painting on glass. And it's a surface that I can do different designs on, just easy designs that are fun, but great for beginners. That is my intent, as I try to stress, is I want people to learn how to paint. Even if it's just, just quirky stuff, you know, that's fine. Be creative. It's a great way to give your mind some peace. And maybe make some cute art for your home. And there we go. All right. Like I said, I could go over this with some of the yellow or whatnot, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave them like this for now. Then I'm going to go, one thing I am going to do is tip one side of this flat brush and one side of it into Thicket and one side of it into the Bumblebee. And those are my green combinations to begin painting in my stem. On this particular one, I'm just going to have it be like a branch where all these pieces are, are coming in to the single branch. Single branch. All right. Then what I'm going to do is, of course, I always like to do a few more pulls towards the top of each flower to attach them to the branch or the branch or the stem. You can do pulls like that or you can just do a single line if you want. I kind of like to work it a little bit and then pull it down. Do the same thing over here. Pull it down. Got a little purple in it. That's okay. The main thing when you're doing simple paintings like this is that you can just work them until you get them to look the way you want them to look. And who's judging? I'm not. And here we go. Pretty simple, right? Are you going to try this painting? Let me know down below if you're going to give it a try. Very, just very different. I thought it was kind of fun to come up with. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is add in my, my leaves. And I'm going to do, I'm attempting to do a wiggly one. And then come back like that. So again, it's coming up, coming up, and you can kind of swerve it down a little bit and then come back up around. And then it is, and then come back up. You can come through your branch here and kind of fill it in so it doesn't look like you're just kind of sticking the leaves on it. 
You can pull the leaves off away and then just have like a little piece attaching them to the branch if you want or to the stem. And then just come back and do the same thing as you're going down the stem. And I like to, you know, I can overlap them a little bit over the flower itself. You just have to be careful though with when you're painting on glass because you can actually start to look like it's separating or you're, you're working, overworking the paint. So you do have to be a little cautious of that. Yeah, let's see, I need to do that over here. And I'm just trying to fill these in wherever I get a chance. I like to do at least one on each side of the flower. But maybe not right exactly lined up. It also can vary depending on how much space you have. Let me move this over a little bit. How much space you have. Because I do my designs on paper prior to doing the videos. So let me do this one better here prior to doing the videos, so it can very much can be a space issue when you come back in and try to put all this into a glass bottle. But I do the best I can, and that's all you can expect from yourself, right? And then I'm going to come down here and do the same thing down here. Just a little swoopy, swoopy leaf comes back up. And so I just have to be careful because that's splitting right there. So you have to be careful of that. You're not working it too much. Light tappings help. I just like to smooth it out a little bit here just so that it doesn't look like it's kind of a separating right here. But you can go over it. I mean, if you want to let it dry or maybe if you're having an a area that is a little bit more difficult to paint over for whatever the reason, you, know, you can just back off a little bit, give it some drying time and come back in and, you know, fix it up or redo it or whatnot. Don't have to redo the whole the whole piece. Alright, we're almost finished. I have one last thing to do. And you can put extra leaves out there. I'm just gonna leave it like this. Get my dotting tool and then I'm just gonna spend some time adding some dots. And I am using the bumblebee on this. I'm just randomly placing them. You don't have to have a ton or you can have a ton. Just up to you how many you want to add. Or if you just want it to be a few, that's fine too. And then I'm just Randomly adding them just to give it some some fun And you could even do like even a gold would be pretty if you want to do another, like another color Again, don't be so caught up on the colors that I'm using You can use whatever color choices you you prefer You are definitely not stuck on my my color palette by any means if there's another brand of paint you prefer, use it. And my thing is, is just to use my designs as inspiration. If you paint them, if you do decide to give a, a shot at painting something that I'm doing, please share it on my Facebook page. That link is down below. I would appreciate it. Love to see your work. 
or if you want to share any other work you're doing. That's great. I love to see and share. All right, so here we go. It's all tapped in with the dots. Got the leaves in it, and I think it's just a real cute, real cute, loose painting that anybody can do. Anybody. All right, if you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. New to my channel, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I post something new. Before you leave, share this on your social network with your family and friends if you would please. Easy to do, just hit that share button below the video and then on your way you go. Alright, thanks so much for taking the time to view this video. I do appreciate you and until the next time, please stay safe and healthy and you have a good one. <music>